without further ado, the great historian, baker, and all around valuable <laughs> person, Patty McCarthy. Uh, I have to correct Jack on one thing. I don't know everything, so I will be saying in a few cases tonight. I just don't know. I wasn't able to find out. I'm not going to uh, budget, so you know, maybe some of you know more than I know, hopefully. Um, I do ask maybe if you could wait till the end for questions. That would be good. Keep the flow going. And I'm a reader, so I hope you don't mind that. And the last thing, I am a crick person. Uh, my husband is a creek person, so creek does sometimes slip in when I'm talking, but you'll hear a lot of creek tonight. All right, the first uh, slide that we're showing is Northeast Philadelphia, and the red line is the border between Philadelphia and Bucks County. Uh, up in the north, you can see a little piece of the line that put the Pequesting Creek is extending past. And so the Pequesting Creek is in other locations beyond Philadelphia. And it comes back into Philadelphia at different spots. But this forms the border of Philadelphia and Bucks County. And it has been that border since 1682. Um, a question is, as many of you know, meat comes from the Lenape word that means place of mice. And the area where the question empties into the Delaware was the first consideration for the location of Penn's Philadelphia. It was for some time called Old Philadelphia. Now last month, Fred Moore shared us and talked about some of the impressive bridges over the Pennypack and Tacony Frankfurt Cricks. <clears throat> the Pequesting also has many bridges. Some are impressive, some are crumbling, some are bizarre. Some carry hundreds to thousands of vehicles a day. Some were not built for vehicles. Some are fallen down. Some have been demolished. Some have been replaced. Some can't be identified, and some might not have ever existed at all. The photo here is the Trevos Bridge. Now, uh, we will start with this, and this is the first of several bridges that most of us don't even think of as a bridge. The Bequestin, as I said, starts uh, with the Philly Bucks border in Trevos. And this bridge is located where the creek stops having Bucks County on both sides, and where Philadelphia County is on one side, and Bucks County is on the other. And this is in Trevose Road. From the surface, the bridge looks like part of the road, unless you realize that you're crossing water or you notice that the bridge has a cement surface, you wouldn't know that you're on a bridge. And that's what it looks like from the side. Uh, there could have been previous bridges before they, you know, modernized roads, there could have been a little wooden bridge or something at that spot, but right now, that's considered a bridge. The next bridge we come to when we're walking downstream is in Somerton, and it um, was originally the Reading Company New York Short Line Railroad Bridge. And the railroad crosses the Pequestin high above the creek. Um, not far away from this bridge, if any of you are familiar with Mast Charter School, uh, there, Byberry Road is the bridge that crosses over the railroad. At this point in time, the railroad bridge crosses the Preston. So, depending on the terrain, a railroad can be bridged or is a bridge. And this uh, was built in 1906, and it's a three-arch stone bridge. And if you can see here, that's a picture from 1956. That's one from the present. It really hasn't changed much. A uh, little bit of cosmetic uh, painting and things like that. But that's about it. And this is a picture, I always think it's very pretty when you're walking in the creek 
to see the underside and see the water because after all, the Pequesson Creek is what this is all about. Now right next to, going downstream, this railroad bridge is what appears to be a deteriorating footbridge across the creek. It looks like it's made of concrete and sections of it have sunk into the creek. I have not been able to confirm if this was indeed a bridge, and if so, what it was used for. Perhaps it could have been used maybe to transport uh, tools and workers across the creek to work on the railroad bridge, because I've seen bridges done for that before. But um, as you can see, right here, that's where it starts right up here, and we're looking from underneath the bridge. And then it kind of falls down, but there are places, like if you're looking in the water here, it just looks like that section fell. It still goes all the way across the creek. As you can see, you can't see the part maybe too well where it's sunken down, but trust me, it's there. It goes straight across. And then that's sunken down over there. So it goes all the way across. And maybe it isn't a bridge, but it sure looked like it was some kind of a crossing across the creek. And I we just found that really interesting. We spent a lot of time looking at that and taking pictures of that. Okay, <clears throat> this is a an 1876 map of Ben Salem Township. Um, and as you can see, in various places, bridges are noted. There's also, in some places, like fords are marked or whatever. So, up at the very top, where we're talk we talked about Tree Base Road, that's an indication of a, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the indication of the bridge there. And the next one is opposite the Van Sant property, which is in Ben Salem, and a bridge is marked there. <laughs> so this is up at Tree Base Road. The Van Sant property, there's a bridge marked here, and there's a bridge marked here, which was the Attleboro Road to, um, up to Langmore, which later became Lincoln Highway, Route 1, etc. So this area is what we're going to talk about next. All right, this is the Pequesson Creek at Carter Road. Alan Trackenberg and I have differences of opinion on this, but as you can see, it's very flat. You know, it, a lot of times when you come to a creek, you have to go down very far. The, the creek from the bank is very, very far down. This looks very, very affordable here. Looks like you could just, you know, go up to your ankles and walk across. And yet, there is marked a bridge on the 1876 map. <clears throat> James Carter built a flour mill where Carter Road is now. I don't know whether you're familiar with that. It's off of Southampton Road, um, not too far when you get past the Arbors. It used to be bought by Barry Hospital. So he started this flour mill in 1838. The mill ran entirely by the power of the Pequesson. It was later run by Elmer Carter, who added a sawmill. In 1864, the machinery for crushing sugar cane to make syrup was also added. So old bridges are very much associated with mills. Quite often, you know, they're even named after mills. And a farmer could drive his wagon across fields and wagon worn paths to get his crops to a mill, but he couldn't sometimes take that wagon down an almost vertical drop to cross the creek. Uh, as I said before, a bridge is marked at this spot. 
<clears throat> but as you can see, it doesn't look like there would be a need for a bridge there. It's very affordable. The uh, banks are sloped. The creek is shallow. So what could explain there being a bridge there but not being a bridge in later uh, maps? And this is not a fact. This is a proposal. I'm proposing this as a possibility. All right, you can see here this is a uh, more current map. I think it's uh, 1953. You can see this here is where um, the line is for the railroad. You see it going up here. This is where Carter's Mill is, but there's no bridge there now. <coughs> this is Byberry Hospital, or as, as it was, all those buildings. <clears throat> now, one possibility of how the landscape of the creek changed over time was this was built in the early 1900s, all of this, all this excavation, tunnels, they built tunnels connecting the different buildings. Um, the railroad bridge, a lot of excavation. So we know that in Philadelphia, quite often they just cover creeks, you know, with earth. Um, that didn't work out too well in, in a lot of areas, but it could possibly be an explanation why there was not a need later on for a bridge. There, the, another possibility could be there never was a bridge. I could not find any kind of uh, bridge petition or anything for it, so I don't know. This is showing um, Carter's Mill in Somerton, as, uh, where the um, creek crosses into Bucks County. There's roads back there that are called Carter Road, Carter's Mill Road. So I think, well, that was the road that they took to get to the mill, but how did they get across the creek? Maybe there was a bridge. Now we see in the 1843 map where you can see where it looks like a bridge is shown crossing the creek. On this, in 1910, after the building of Byberry and the um, railroad were done, there's no bridge across the creek. There is a bridge over the mill race. And this is a picture from the Bruce Connor collection of Carter's Mill. And this is on, you know, Philadelphia side. Now, if you notice, there is someone standing on the bridge over the mill race. Maybe that's what they were talking about all along when they were talking about a bridge. Although that wouldn't be big enough to, you know, carry wagons of uh, grain and everything across. But it's a very picturesque looking shot of someone standing on the bridge there. This is the Roosevelt Boulevard Bridge. And yes, you can walk underneath Roosevelt Boulevard, and it's actually nice walking underneath there. It's not very noisy from all the traffic and everything, but I thought that was a nice shot too. And you can see, you know, the sides of the bridge. There, it's concrete. All right, Roosevelt Boulevard is part of US-1, and it's a concrete arch bridge. It was built in 1921 as a section of the road that would become the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Boulevard, AKA Roosevelt Boulevard, AKA the Boulevard. And it was officially opened the entire boulevard in 1926. But this area up here was opened in 1921, and it was rehabilitated in 1964. 
And that's an aerial view. Uh, you can see the creek going across right here. And you can notice the difference in the uh, surfacing of the boulevard. So like the Wawa on the boulevard is right over there. And you're coming into Philadelphia through there. All right, this is the Byberry and Ben Salem Turnpike Bridge. And it's located behind the Lincoln Hotel, I believe, um, right behind the boulevard. And it's a two-span stone arch bridge. It was built in 1805 by Nathaniel Van Sant, that family that I was showing you was across the creek from Carter's Mill. Uh, he was a captain in the Continental Army. And there must have been a compelling reason for Van Sant to pay the expense of building a bridge rather than petitioning the local government to build it. Uh, perhaps he had petitioned it and they had denied his petition. Uh, perhaps he felt that they wouldn't really oppose a done deal if he paid for it and then brought them out to inspect it and, you know, asked them to pay for it. Because they did. He did petition them to come out and inspect it. They did come out and inspect it. They liked the location. They liked the way it was built. So they said, hey, okay. So, um, you know, maybe that's why he paid for it ahead of time, because he really wanted it at that spot. And you can see the surface of it is in brick, or it was in brick. There's very, very few bricks left to that. All right, when we talk about this brick road, at the time, uh, it became part of the Lincoln Highway in 1913. And during that time, it was used as a service test road. Different surfaces were used along the road, di different depths of uh, materials, you know, we'll put this much gravel down, this much stone, you know, whatever. And uh, there, there's a book, you know, done about it with all the different pictures and really, really interesting statistics on how deep we should go at every different point. But um, they wanted to see what was going to be the most durable. So the work was done by the Department of Public Works, Bureau of Highways in Philadelphia. And uh, it was built in, as I said, in 1913, but then it was improved in 1917 because of the anticipated um, traffic that was going to be along the Lincoln Highway. The Lincoln Highway was the first coast-to-coast -coast highway, and the Byberry and Ben Salem Bridge is the oldest bridge on that highway. When the boulevard opened in 1921 up in that area, the Byberry and Ben Salem Turnpike Bridge was bypassed. So it was just four years after it was improved that now it's not really going to be used at all. The road and the bridge were then only used for local traffic, mostly um, for the uh, east side of the Byberry Hospital, people that work there, people that were, wanted to cut through the neighborhoods um, that were you know, forming up in the northeast. Now it's completely closed to traffic. Now you can see here how badly deteriorated it is. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking to walk along where <clears throat> this was all brick, and you can still see some brick in here. Jack and I were there last week. You, you see like two or three bricks now. It's really deteriorating. Um, there was some orange uh, hazard netting to keep people from falling that was taken down and a um, concrete stopper was put up, that's down. Uh, it's, it's just terrible. All this was all wall at one time. So there are plans, just because there is money in the Pennsylvania budget, to do some uh, bridge restoration. And hopefully in this spring, they will be um, starting bids on this restoration. It won't be open 
to vehicles, but it will be a pedestrian way to get into Benjamin Rush Park. And um, also, it can be used for maintenance vehicles by the park, because they won't be you know, going in and out all the time. Now, earlier when I was describing what you were going to see tonight, one of the things I talked about was bizarre bridges. And this is one. Oh, no, no, that's more. This is actually what Jack and I saw last week. So the, the further deterioration. Um, this, they were taken to the same exact spot. This is the downstream side. You can see the whole long wall. This is the upstream side, nothing. And at one time that was all, all there. This is the bizarre bridge I was talking about. It's just this little private bridge going across the bequesting with a gate there that says no trespassing, private property. And um, it's locked on the Philadelphia side. The owners of the bridge live on the Ben Salem side. In um, Nottingham, in a, a home in Nottingham. So this is what it looks like from the side. It looks like steel with just, you know, planks of treated wood on top, nothing over here, the, the fence there. And if you're in the creek, you notice there's some duckies here too, um, that this part here does not seem to touch the ground at the park, at, at Benjamin Rush Park. It's sitting in the water. And even though this is all, all this invasive um, greens here, Although they are approaching the bridge, if you look from underneath, the bridge itself isn't touching that Philadelphia land. It's sort of sitting in the middle of the creek. So that's interesting. I've heard that the people were sold a little piece of property. I just don't know, but it must be very nice to have your own private entrance into the Pequesting Creek Trail and, and to Benjamin Rush State Park. This is the next bridge we come to going downstream, and this is the Rich Lou Road Bridge, another bridge that is sadly, sadly deteriorating. It was petitioned by uh, Philadelphia County that the subscribers were in great need of a bridge at Townsend Mill. Townsend Mill, the Townsend family, I don't know whether any of you are aware of Townsend Road, uh, but the Townsend family owned a great amount of property in the Byberry area. And there was a, a grist mill up uh, on the Bequesson at this spot, and that's what they were uh, petitioning for a bridge for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, bridges, uh, mills and bridges are often associated because there's always going to be water to run the mill, and you need a place if you're on the other side to be able to get across. Uh, they, it was uh, petitioned in 1846, and then another petition was submitted in 1848. And so it says on the bridge, or it did say on the bridge at one time, and when you try to look up information, they say that this bridge was built in 1840. Well, obviously it wasn't because um, both of these dates that they petitioned for a bridge were after that 1840 date. Now, the Townsend Mill is on the southern end of the creek, and it's part of uh, Richelieu Road in Ben Salem, thus the name Richelieu Bridge. Um, the bridge is owned by PennDOT, operated by Bucks County, and it is also going to hopefully get uh, bids to have it refurbished uh, this coming spring. Small, but this is the bridge petition for it, one of them. And they all have basically the same uh, wording. It's to the Court of Common Pleas, and um, we're working at a great inconvenience for need of a 
bridge across the road and everything. I, I was just surprised because they mentioned in the petition that they want this bridge for Townsend Mill. It wasn't called the Townsend Mill Bridge. Because usually it's named after the mill that it's attached to. But it was named uh, Richley Road, and uh, Richley was one of the um, farms, uh, packets of ground that was owned by Lawrence Grodin, whose um, estate, Ben Salem, you know, he owned just about all of that area up there. And, and there were several of his plots that were named Richelieu, like Northern Richelieu, Southern Richelieu, and also, uh, I'm assuming that's where the name came from. So you can see it's calling it on this map, an 1819 map, um, Townsend's Grist Mill. But there's no bridge there at that time. And this is the deterioration that we saw a couple years ago. And this has the orange barriers. And when Jack and I were walking on it last week, there were kids that were trying to push more of the you know, parapets down. And it, it's, it's, I don't know what, even if when they do some work on it, what's gonna happen, because unless there's someone guarding what they're doing, kids uh, tend to get into mischief. And this is it last week. And you can see just huge hunks taken out. The next uh, bridge that we come to is at the edge of Mechanicsville, the village of Mechanicsville. And it's called the Century Lane Bridge. It's a two-span stone uh, and concrete arch bridge. And when it was built, it's down here. So Mechanicsville is here, and this is the way to get Mechanicsville's here, and Elizabethtown was on the other side of the creek. So in order to connect the two, they needed a bridge. This was called the State Road, and at that time, before the bridge was built. Uh, they built the bridge in 1853. In 1953, to mark the centennial of the bridge, the name of the road and the street were changed to the Century Lane Bridge and to Century Lane. So it's no longer the state road over there, it's Century Lane. All right, this is some views of the Century Lane Bridge. Very, very nice looking. These are the old marker on the bridge shown in 1853, Philadelphia and Bucks County Bridge. And this is the um, showing that it was built in 1853, but it, it was improved in, in 2004 by the counties again. Okay, just moving just a little bit downstream. We see the Townsend Mill. We see in here where Carter's Mill is. Now we come to Dumps Ferry Road. Uh, Dumps Ferry Road gets its name from a very famous uh, ferry that was up in Ben Salem. Uh, his name, the man's name, Dunk was his nickname. Duncan Williamson was his official name. He was here before Penn had a um, a very successful ferry, and I'm assuming that the bridge, I mean, the road, that the road um, came from the ferry, and that's why it had that name. But since then, there's been all kinds of building done, and you know, if, if you're familiar with Dunks Ferry, it starts here and ends there and picks up somewhere else, and you know, there is still a marker where Dunks Ferry uh, the ferry was, it's at the uh, southern end of Neshaminy State Park. And, but this we're talking about, it comes in to Philadelphia by way of, it, it crosses Knights Road, and then comes down and then crosses the Preston Creek. 
at the bottom of um, Otter's Field and goes through Park Road Manor. You can see here that this is where Byberry Friends Meeting House was. And in so many of these bridge and road petitions, it mentions it, it, um, the need to get to a meeting house. That was very, very important to the people of the time. Um, they had come over, their ancestors at least, had come over for religious freedom. Many of them, when these things were being built, were, were still um, Quakers and wanted to be able to get to their meeting house. These were usually farmers who spent long days every day working in their fields and all. They, they didn't have social lives. They didn't, you know, hop in their car and go somewhere. But when they went to meeting, they saw their neighbors. They saw their family. You know, they could talk about, you know, anything that was going on. So get an, an easy way to get to meeting was extremely important. And if you have a, a crook standing in your way, that makes it even more difficult. So um, this is the 1819 Mellish map, um, and it shows a bridge at Dunks Ferry then. I have not been able to find, going through the um, bridge petitions and all, and early, any early uh, bridge petitions for this road. And yet, there's a bridge being shown there. <clears throat> the bridge that was built prior to the one that is there now was built in 1828. This I only know from old newspaper articles that say that the new bridge was replaced in the 1828 bridge. So again, still can't find any uh, bridge petitions. This is what the 1828 bridge I'm sorry, I said 1828, I meant 1928. The 1928 bridge, this was pictures taken shortly thereafter. Now as you can see, there's stone at each end, but there's concrete in the center where the crook is flowing through. This is what the deck looks like and you can see it's going up this curving, very steep hill. This right now is Potter's Field over here. This is all the PYO fields, Parkwood youth fields. But this was a very hazardous, very sharp hill, twisting, turning um, to get down, and it was a one lane bridge. And that was built in 1928, 1828, sorry. Right. One of the reasons why the bridge was replaced, and that was done in 1990, was that there were new patterns, new traffic patterns into the neighborhood. Um, in the 30 years prior to replacing the bridge, the neighborhood was mostly rural, and uh, now there was all these row homes being built, right, you know, the, the bridge is right down the end of this river. And you know, they needed an exit from the neighborhood. And, but if it was snowy or icy, I'm telling you, because I lived there then, it was hazardous. You know, the, the, the cars just slid down. They slid into the side of the bridge. The bridge was very low to the water. It flooded often. So they decided this has got to be fixed. Now this is the 1828 bridge right before it was replaced. And you can, I, can't, I don't know whether you can tell from this photo how low it sits to the water. So, I mean, you could be going down across this bridge and this whole area here is just flooded. So when they replaced it, they raised it above the 100 year flood elevation. And the new bridge, 
although not, you know, a nice stone bridge or anything like that. It, it, it's built of cast-in-place concrete with standard PennDOT precast, restressed concrete box beam superstructure mounted on reinforced concrete abutment. Sounds impressive, right? And that's what it looks like from the side, from underneath the curtain. <clears throat> now, the city was concerned because Philadelphia, all of Pennsylvanians love their stone arch bridges. And as a matter of fact, from being a Keystone State and a Keystone in the bridge, Pennsylvania has more stone arch bridges than any other state in the country. But, so they were very worried about, because stone arch bridges cost so much to build. So they wanted to go this route, it was a lot cheaper, but they were afraid, they wanted it to look nice. One of the things they did, they had a three coat anti-graffiti paint on it, which gets challenged often, but they're able to take it off. Although underneath the bridge, the graffiti is there. And as you can see, it was rebuilt in 1990. And um, so although it's not historic, Per se, it replaces things that were historic and in a historic area and had historic significance for the neighborhood. Uh, I am going to stop here because I have another 10 bridges that I could talk about, but it's getting towards that time and I want to keep you wanting more, or maybe you don't, but uh, there's a lot more interesting, actually a lot more interesting stories to tell about these different bridges. So if you could um, bear with me and come back in April, I will tell you about the rest. Um, does anyone have any questions about the ones that we've covered today? Yes. The bridges were mostly for mills, some for churches. Mm -hmm. When apparently they primarily benefited those organizations or businesses. Did the city or state ask those enterprises to contribute to the construction of the cost of them? Yeah, um, usually when they petitioned for a bridge, it was because you know they had someone come and look at the area and they said, we can't afford that. And even though they were sharing in these specific cases, because they're all on the border of Bucks and Philadelphia counties. Um, that each county would say, well, we can't afford that. So they did usually uh, put in part of it, and they had you know, local workers back at this time. There were no bids and there were no contractors. Local people did the work. So yeah, but they, so they didn't... the contribution may have been paying the workers? Say probably, the yeah. They Mm -hmm. Did you ever run into an instance where somebody built the bridge and the city made them tear it down? I mean, that would happen today. Yeah, and, and I'm sure there were. Or they didn't feel that they were um, sturdy enough or built the right way. But this is, as I said, a very little. I mean, the Pequesson is only what, 10, 10 miles long, a little over 10 miles long, within Philadelphia. And there's 21 bridges. You know, that's... That's a lot. So I'm sure within the city, having pricks and, and, and rivers and everything running through the city, I'm sure there were a lot of cases where they said, uh-uh, you know, that isn't going to fly. That's not safe. Yes? What was the uh, connection with Richelieu, the Richelieu Gardens and Ben Salem? Mm -hmm. The name of Richelieu Because Lawrence, Broden, who had, he was the biggest landowner in Ben Salem Township, and he um, named the area that he lived was, that was Trevos, yeah, yeah, Trevos, but he had, Trevos was one of his plots of land. He had these farms and he, you know, rented them out or had people, you know, working them for him. 
and several of them were named Rishli. So, and that area where the bridge is, that was one of the Rishlis. So it, it just stuck. Yes. There was a village in Ben Salem named Rishli, on Rishli Road, on Rishli Road. Okay. I can see it. You can see it, yeah, but it's a little, it's a small village, but mm -hmm. it was, the, the road went to Rishli, okay. the village of Rishli. But there, there were, like I said, several yep. Rishlis, and that was the one closest to the bridge. And it led to it. But again, I, I really don't understand why when in the road petitions, uh, bridge petitions, road petitions, they're all talking about the Townsend's Mill Bridge. But they didn't call it Townsend's Mill. Yes. When they replaced the Belts Ferry Bridge, they made the new bridge much wider. Uh, not no, not much wider. It's two lanes instead of one. So um, and it used to really back up. Um, because there were no stop signs and you couldn't necessarily see who was coming from right, what direction. You so, the horn before you went. You did, you, you did. Up. Sometimes if you didn't remember, you ended up backing up because someone was already mostly across the bridge. Um, yeah, it was, it was dangerous and I, and I can't believe it took till 1990 because it, that was 30 years after the, the, that neighborhood was teeming with people. Patty, I remember when they replaced the bridge, um, after there was a flood, a bad flood, mm -hmm. and um, it flooded out. I remember the water was across Century Lane. Wow. So yeah, that's really hard. And it was, um, afterwards there was a big hole in the bridge, and they had it closed until they replaced it. Yeah, and, and they, had, they obviously had to close it too. I mean, keep it closed right. to, in order to replace it. It's not easy. Uh, it was closed for a long time. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. Did anybody ever drive into the creek? I'm, I'm sure they did. I, they I, didn't ever be out of it. I know there was damage done to the yeah. walls of it several times. Two years ago, I saw a car in the creek right by the uh, French Ferry Bridge. I mean, oh. Even today. Oh. We were coming down Century Lane, and there was a guardrail on it. We went down, they crossed over to Dunks Ferry, and down the thing into the creek. Yes? Where does the creek start? Uh, it starts in Trevis, not too far from where it starts in, in Philly. But it does... Um, it doesn't go too much further up? It doesn't go further up, but it goes, does go more like west. It comes in and out of Moreland, uh, upper, uh, lower Moreland. Okay. Um, There's a branch of it that goes through Pine Tree Farms and Feaster Bell mm -hmm. up beyond Street Road. Mm -hmm. Technically, the headwaters, I mean, it actually extends a little bit into Upper South, the watershed. Mm -hmm. But um, it would be the area just like north of Bustle Avenue mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of small creeks that drain and then they go into a big pipe under Bustleton Avenue and come out behind the bowling alley there. Mm -hmm. And are, are, isn't part I think of that it, is uh, technically where the headwaters are. Isn't but, part, part of it like over by the uh, well, over Sutter, by the uh, cemetery over Philmont? Sutter Springs yeah, mm -hmm. that drains into Bloody Mountain, <coughs> yeah. which is a tributary that meets it at Trevo's Road there. Yeah. So, um, yes. There's a headwater at Pine Road School. Right. Yeah. It's, that comes down across this uh, county line road and uh, Philmont and right. that area. That's There's actually two main tributaries, I think. One in Trevo's and that one in uh, at Pine Road School. So, um, the, the reason why I didn't cover anything, I'm, I was just covering the border between Bucks and, I mean, I know that the creek extends further, but that was the area I was concentrating on. That's, that's where we walked. Yes? And that first bridge that you showed, is yeah. that by the Mass School now? 
The, the railroad bridge? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, that is along the Questing Brick Avenue. It's Southampton Road. You turn down Carter Road, which is where the mill was. And then you go to, you can't go any further, which is where the brick is, but there's a road along there. And you go, you make a left, and you go down to where that dead ends, and that's where the uh, railroad bridge is. But as I said, in that area, it's way above ground. Mass, which is just down at Byberry Road, is on the ground. So Byberry Road's going over. Yes? Tell us about what it was like getting access, like when you park your car and then just walking down to the bridge. No, we would, um, <laughs> we would take two cars and we would anticipate where we would end up. We'd park one car there and then we'd go to some place that it was, we were able to park and carry our waiters with us and sit down on the edge of the creek. And, and it was very interesting because we got stopped by a lot of people on the Bucks County side that wanted to know what you were, what were you doing down there? What are you doing? You know, because Mm -hmm. They didn't know whether we were planning a home invasion or, you know, what was going on. Not too many people walk in the crack there. So it was interesting and we told people about, you know, our group here and eventually we were going to, you know, do a presentation and they, they thought it was interesting. Don't know whether any of them came or not, whatever, but, um, you know, we, we were suspicious. And, it, and you get a whole different uh, perspective when you're in the creek because, I mean, I, we live right in that neighborhood. We live right near Dumps Ferry Road. And yet when you're in the creek, you're like, oh, that shopping center's right here, you know, on Street Road. You know, this is here, this is there, because you don't, you don't see what's right there because you have to, you're driving on a road. You know, there's no pavements. There's no, the question, unfortunately, doesn't have the paths close to the creek, like the penny pack does. I mean, there are, there are places, there are places that you can walk close, but there are other places that, you know, you, you can't even see the creek when you're walking. Yes? Did you walk as far as past Philadelphia Mills in the creek? Yeah. How far did you go as far out as the river? Yeah, we... We had to walk along the side because um, it, it took us a lot of years. We started doing the walking in 2013. And we just did a little bit, but it gets either too hot for those waiters, you know, you're dying, or too cold. And, I and you young. feel, yeah, and you're not young. And when I was young and stupid, I made yeah. a friend walk. Oh, oh the whole wait, time. We got far as that five near Knights nice Road. Okay. We, we gave up. We did. We walked all behind um, Franklin Mills, uh, underneath Woodhaven Road, out along there. We, we stopped basically at Frankfurt Avenue um, because it gets deeper the closer you get. Yeah, where Bill Road is too. That's how it's yeah. on the way up that yeah. way. Yeah. Back then it was a little bit of a reach right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll cover that in my next, my next section. Anyone else? Yes. The, um, when they talk about the, uh, the mill on Question Creek there, yes. uh, Carter's Mill, do they actually know where it was? Because at the bridge where the railroad trestle was over the, the creek, when you're looking down the street to the right side is an arch. That was a dam to what it was there. That concrete walkway that went out, and you were talking about the sunken, the right side of that was not, not there. That was washed out over the years. I, mean, I spent a lot of time down there. <laughs> You're talking about Carter's now. Yeah, I'm talking about Carter's Bill, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about up above there where the railroad bridge is, mm -hmm. and you were talking about that it was a path or a bridge mm -hmm. going across mm -hmm. there. If you're looking down the street, mm -hmm. the right side was level with that concrete. The left side was a big trough. And I often wondered if that was where a mill sat, because there was a dam there. And if you look upstream, I mean, the, the water used to run under both sides of that railroad trestle. 
Did you see where the dam was? Yeah, the the uh -huh. um, the ones the one side where you're saying it was running down was probably the mill race. The mill itself was at Carter Road. Um, what, was there another mill there at the, at the railroad trust? Not, not that I know of. If you, if you look at the left, looking downstream, if you look at the left side, you can see where it was a channel large enough to possibly spin a water wheel. And if you look where the dam was, that back the water up, if you walk upstream and walk on each side, you can actually see the levels. I only clearly know I spent all that time down there as a child. You can actually see the levels of where the water used to be, where the wood line, where the forest, mm -hmm. what's left of it anyway. Um, and you can see that that was all dammed up back there. So well, I often wondered if that was actually the mill, not knowing. Yeah, all the mills. All the mills have, you know, dams to hold the water because it's the pressure of the water that, that makes everything go. The water wheel and the, the wheels and everything. But that bridge, or maybe bridge, is concrete. Concrete really didn't um, come into use until the late 1800s, and the mill ended there at like 1905. So um, it probably was part of the mill race, but not that existing thing because it just was too early for that material to have been for that purpose. Now when you, you spoke about Carter Road being where the mill was, mm -hmm. when you come down Carter Road and came to the bottom of the hill, mm -hmm. you used to be able to go down and across the creek. And on the other side of the creek there was a farm. And it was, like you said, walkable. You, we used to be able to drive, you used to be able to drive a car for us there. Mm -hmm. And to the left side of that was a cottage that actually sat right on the creek at the bottom of the Carter Road. Mm -hmm. And then the old farmhouse sits up on the corner of Carter Road and the question for you to drive. Right, right. Yeah, because the mill, the mill house where, where the Carters lived, I mean, that, that wasn't the mill because the mill has to be at, at the creek. We know was that the old farm building that still sits on that corner there. Right. The Carter, was that Carter's house? Yes. That was Carter's house. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And that bridge which uh, I had a picture of in Nottingham, it goes over the creek with the, the gate. Mm -hmm. That's a flatbed truck stuck over there. Yeah, that's that, that, yeah. If you see the state pockets on the side and the actual housing underneath it. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, yeah, that's. I, I understand that the guy owns the property on both sides of the creek. That's how the only way he lived with the property. See, I thought because I can't imagine that's been um, either city or state property for like forever. Well, I, I don't know whether they uh, they condemned it and took it, but when he put the bridge in, uh -huh. the property on both sides of the creek. Oh, okay. Well, we actually did check into that, and mm -hmm. he does own a sliver of property. Sliver? Built <laughs> side. Apparently, it's the property line extended over. We would all like to own a sliver of our own little private entrances. All right, well, if anyone has any other questions, I can talk to you in the back. And um, is it a, Am I okay for April, Fred? Yes. Yeah. To continue this? Sign up. Okay. Gotcha. All right, well, thank you all.